automatically coloring alternating rows. You're probably familiar with the practice of shading every other row in a large set of data. It helps your eye travel across the row, visually connecting data that belong together. In comparison, data without this formatting is more difficult to follow across. So how does one go about adding this alternating shading to an Excel spreadsheet? Well, it could be done manually using the Fill Color button. Successively larger portions can be copied down the page. But suppose you had 10,000 rows of data. Or suppose you're going to be adding and deleting rows after the formatting is applied. In such cases, the data begins to look chaotic, and the whole purpose of being able to easily follow something begins to get disrupted. Fortunately, there's an easy way to format a range so that cells in alternate rows are automatically colored. When rows are inserted or deleted, the shading automatically adjusts. The steps to do this are basically the same in Excel 2007 and earlier versions, but there are some differences, so we'll look at both. Starting here in Excel 2003, select the cell range where the alternate row shading is to be applied. Go to the Format menu and select Conditional Formatting. If Conditional Formatting doesn't show up, expand the menu. In the dialog box, select Formula Is in the first drop-down menu. In the Formula bar, type Mod, open parenthesis, Row, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, comma, two, close parenthesis. We'll examine how this formula works shortly. For now, let's just type it in. Either upper or lower case is fine. Clicking the Format button allows formatting of the font, cell borders, and background pattern to be specified. Basically, when the conditions of the formula entered are true, this formatting will be applied. For our example, just change the background pattern. Click OK. OK again, and the alternating colored rows display. If rows are added or deleted, the same pattern is maintained. Also, you can copy and paste that same formatting, and it's still valid that the it automatically adjusts for inserted and deleted rows. To change or remove the formatting, select the range to be changed, go back to Format, Conditional Formatting, change the formula to alter when formatting is applied, or click the Format button and change the formatting itself. To remove formatting completely, click the Delete button, select Condition 1, click OK and OK again, and your vision will be applied. While we're here, though, try changing the word Row to Column in the formula. Click OK, and now the alternate columns are shaded rather than rows. Moving over to Excel 2007, select the range of cells to which the formatting will be applied. Make sure that the ribbon is on the Home menu. The Conditional Formatting command is in the Styles section. If your Excel window isn't maximized, the Styles section may be squeezed down to just a button, but click on it and Conditional Formatting should be right there. Click on Conditional Formatting and select New Rule. In the dialog box, select Use a Formula to determine which cells to format. In the Formula box, 
type the same formula that we used before. Select your formatting. Click OK. And your formatting is displayed. Select the formatting once again and we can look at if we would like to clear the formatting we can clear it with selected cells or we can clear the entire sheet or if we would like to change that formatting we can select the manage rules command select the specific rule to change edit rule and we can change our formula or the formatting involved So now that we've explored how to produce the alternating row effect, let's examine the formula we used, equals mod row comma 2. It's a fairly simple formula combining two different Excel functions. We'll look at the functions individually and then at how they work in combination. For the row function, place any valid cell address in the parentheses and it returns the row number for that cell address. For instance, If we refer to this red cells address with the function, it returns the number 6, which is the row number of the red cell. If no cell reference is used, it returns the row number of the cell in which the formula has been entered. Carrying this down, we see that the numbers returned match the row numbers of the cells in which the formula was typed. As demonstrated earlier, a similar column function returns a cell's column number. To understand the mod function, recall how long division is taught in elementary school. One draws a bracket, placing the dividend underneath, the divisor outside, and the answer on top. If the numbers divide evenly, everything is simple. If not, you get a decimal answer, which is what a calculator or Excel would display. However, in the earliest stages of learning long division, a non-integer answer is often written as a number with a remainder. Formally, the name for that remainder is the modulus, and the mod function is used to calculate it. Notice that the arguments of the mod function are the same as the dividend and divisor in our long division problem. If the arguments divide evenly, the modulus is zero. And if they don't, the modulus is a non-zero value. Going back to our formula, we find we're finding the modulus of the row number when it's divided by 2. In every case, for even numbered rows, the modulus is equal to 0, and in odd numbers rows, the modulus for our formula is equal to 1. As you may have guessed, that is, that is the controlling factor for whether our formatting shows up in our alternating rows. If it's a zero, no formatting. If it's anything other than a zero, the formatting is applied. So there you have it. A way to automatically color rows or columns using conditional formatting. We've also learned the basics of the row, column, and mod functions. Look for this and other handy Excel tutorials at Excelopedia.com.